Have you ever checked your bank balance and wondered where all your money went? If this sounds like you, then more likely than not you are practicing money habits that will keep you poor forever. Therefore, in this video, I will share with you 7 expensive habits that will keep you poor forever. And if you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button below for more life changing content. Habit number 1. Spending more than you make. Let's face it, spending money is fun. In fact, there is scientific evidence to support this phenomenon. When you're considering buying something, your brain releases dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical produced by our brains that plays a starring role in motivating behavior. It gets released when we take a bite of food, when we have sex, after we exercise, and when we spend money. In an evolutionary context, it rewards us for beneficial behaviors and motivates us to repeat them. This is why humans have such a hard time resisting spending, and often this spending is only curbed when all funds have been depleted and credit cards have been maxed out. However, when people come into money this problem perpetuates. Maybe you got a bonus at work, or maybe you got a promotion. These increases in income trigger our inclination to spend as we continue to chase that dopamine high. But it's not just the dopamine high that makes us open our wallets and spend. We also feel an intense need to fit in with our peers, and one way we can maintain our social status in society is by having the nicest clothes or the newest car. Unfortunately, this incessant spending is keeping you broke. You see, if you spend every dollar you make, you will never be able to save money, invest, or retire. What separates the rich from the poor is the management of their money. Whereas the majority of people spend every new dollar they earn, the rich maintain their modest lifestyles as their incomes rise. This allows them to begin saving more and more money as their cash flow increases. But the rich don't just hoard this money. They then deploy this money into investments like Roth IRAs, mutual funds, investment properties, or their own business to allow this cash to grow further. Therefore, if you want to become wealthy then you must avoid spending more as your income rises. Habit number 2. Sacrificing future happiness for present pleasure. There are two types of people in this world, those who live for today and those who build for tomorrow. And unfortunately the majority of people fall into the first category. Now don't get me wrong, enjoying the present is very important because no one knows how long each of us have to live. But more likely than not, you will make it to tomorrow and if you are always trading future rewards for present pleasure, then you will never be rich. This trade off is actually one of the big differentiators between the rich and the poor. When the rich make more money, they forego the desire to spend the money today and instead sock it away into savings and investments that grow in value and provide financial resources that can be used in the future to maintain their current standard of living. In financial terms, delaying gratification is known as delay discounting and it takes place when someone decides to discount the value of future rewards to immediately gratify themselves even though accepting a lesser reward isn't exactly rational. The rich know that future payoffs will be greater than present rewards and studies strongly support how this restraint from present gratification can lead to larger income realizations in the future. In a study of over 2500 people, participants were asked whether they would hypothetically accept a smaller sum of money, $500 USD, or a larger sum, $1000 USD, after a delay, which could be one day, one week, one month, six months, or a year. When the researchers used machine learning algorithms to model the relationship between individuals tendency for delay discounting and the other self-reported variables, they found that delay discounting was more predictive of income than age, ethnicity, race, and height. Therefore, if you truly want to become rich, then you must take the future into perspective whenever you are making financial decisions. Although it is good to take care of everything in the present, do your best to save for your future. Habit number 3. You think you are too young to worry about saving. Let's be real, when we are young, our primary focus is to look cool and fit in with those around us. To do this, we buy the newest clothes and the latest gadgets to feel like we are part of the in crowd. We are much more worried about our social status than saving for a house or for a retirement. This carefree attitude leads us to spending every penny we earn, leaving little to support us down the road. In reality, you were never too young to start saving and just as importantly investing. Take Warren Buffett for example. He bought his first stock at age 11 and over the course of numerous decades has leveraged his mastery in investing to become one of the richest men in the world. Let's use an example to illustrate just how important it is to get serious about your finances from an early age. Say we have two people, Mike and Steve. Mike begins investing at age 19, investing $2000 a year at 12% for just 8 years, meaning that his last investment is at age 26. 
Steve, on the other hand, waits until he's 27 to start investing and invests $2,000 a year at 12% until age 65. Who do you think will end up with more money at age 65? Well, Steve seems like the logical choice because he invested for 39 years compared to Mike's 8 years. Mike actually ends up with an extra $700,000 over Steve because of when he started investing. So as this example proves, it is never too early to start saving and more importantly, investing your money. Habit number four, not tracking your spending. We all think we know where our money comes from and where it ends up. Sadly, that's not true for most of us. We might be aware of our major expenditures like buying a car or getting a new phone, but the small things usually eat up our finances more than the big ones. For instance, when I used to not track my expenses, more often than not, I would open up my credit card statement at month's end and be completely shocked by how much bigger my bill was than I anticipated. The truth is that all the nights out, coffees, and clothes I was buying was adding up to much more than a large expenditure would every month, which squandered any chance I had at saving money. It was only once I came across a quote by Peter Drucker, what isn't measured isn't managed, that I knew that I had to change my ways and started tracking my expenses. Being the lazy person that I am, I avoided setting up complicated apps or programs and simply began writing down all my purchases in my iPhone notes. This simple yet effective strategy allowed me to see exactly where my money was going and I still use this technique to this day. However, the strategy didn't solve all my money issues because while I was tracking my expenditures, I still found myself overspending, which leads us to habit number five. Habit number five, lack of budgeting. Now, maybe you are already tracking your spending. If so, great. But if you don't spend according to a plan, then you may still find yourself in financial trouble. You see, you could be tracking the fact that you are spending hundreds of dollars on drinks and clothes every month, causing you to rack up a significant amount of credit card debt, which will leave you in as much trouble as if you weren't tracking at all. This is where a budget comes in and one of the best ways to budget is by using the 20-30-50 method. This budgeting technique works by dividing your income in the following three ways. 50% is designated to living expenses like rent, utilities, and groceries. The next 30% goes towards entertainment costs like going out to eat or seeing a movie. The final 20% is meant to go right into your savings account. This means that you can now track your expenses according to the amounts you've designated at the start of each month ensuring that your money goals are achieved. Habit number six, ignoring your debt. As of June 2019, Americans are in more than $500 billion worth of credit card debt, with the average household having a balance of almost $7,000 on their cards. This insane amount of debt doesn't even factor in auto loans, student debt, and the largest debt, mortgages. In short, the United States has a debt issue, and part of this problem is that debt has gotten out of hand for so many people that the only way they can cope with this financial struggle is by ignoring it. In fact, the issue has gotten so bad that 10% of Americans say that they don't even think they will ever be free of credit card debt. So how has this issue propagated to this extreme? Debt has become an issue in Western culture for a few reasons. Firstly, most people are unaware of the almost infinite ways there are to make money, meaning that their income is limited to what their employer will pay them, which more often than not is not a lot. Second, people are in a constant struggle to compete with their peers in order to feel a sense of social validation, which they do through spending, which has been perpetuated by the rise in social media. Finally, debt operates in a vicious cycle. When debt isn't paid off, interest charges are added to the already insurmountable balance, meaning that the debt grows bigger and bigger over time. When this happens, people begin to ignore their debt completely, which has caused the United States to have more than $13 trillion worth of debt outstanding. So if you want to avoid this bad habit, then make paying your debt a top of the list item on your agenda. Work out a plan for this and stick to it, no matter what. Habit number seven, constantly upgrading your electronic gadgets. It seems like every year, technology companies release new phones, computers, and tablets, making the ones we currently have even more obsolete than they already were. While the newest gadgets rarely have any significant differences in their functionalities, these companies know that on a psychological level, us humans are wired to want the latest electronics, but not because of their functions, but because of the social status that they can offer us. For instance, every year Apple comes out with at least one new version of the iPhone. And while some years the changes between models are significant, most years they aren't. But what does change is the fact that you no longer have the newest model iPhone, which leaves you as a social outcast if the rest of your social circle decides to upgrade their phones. And this phenomenon is pervasive amongst 
every material item in the world, like clothes and of course cars. Besides these upgrades being rather irrational, they erode our ability to save money. Upgrading your phone can easily cost a couple hundred dollars which could be put to much better use if it was saved or better yet invested. In short, it's okay to not have the newest gadgets and if you aren't accepted by your peers because of it, then you're probably not hanging around with the right people anyway. So when you feel the urge to upgrade your electronics coming on, take a page out of William Shatner's playbook when he says, if saving money is wrong, then I don't want to be right. Thanks for watching. If you want to go from the life you have to the life you deserve, then hit the subscribe button now.